No, not that's my mom. Thank you. I know I stopped by one day and you weren't here. Also, that's okay. Somebody dag or somebody should always be able to like open. Oh, I didn't want to bother anybody, so I thought I'll get it as soon as yeah. I can. Yeah. Thanks, Bobby. I can. I can. I'll just. You know what? I just got myself just for the lieutenant. Like, like, like your own place. Yes. <laughs> I can move it. I thought you were gone for some reason. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> But I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be. Good girl. Badge. Yeah, just gonna make mine. There's what? I mean, usually twenty is already pretty good, and all I have to do is the little bit on Crane Buchanan. But I must have been the first fool. World, yeah. it had already filled in. There, you know, I didn't even have the tracks and. People were behind me and I took it slow. I just came in like 40. I didn't care. I was 45, yeah. I didn't care. care. They can pile up behind me or pass me. I don't and... care. Oh, and it's so slick. You can't it was stop. slick. I you mean, can't. you're all right until you have to go to stop and then you're in trouble. <laughs> Those darn trucks go so fast that, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what they're going to do. So I just like, well, I'm just stand my speed that I feel comfortable at. Yep. Yeah. And when I took Diane out to the clinic this morning, Someone was doing the same thing, and a school bus passed them. I thought you'd pass. I know. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's yeah. pretty pretty bad. Well, that somebody, I don't there. know. Who, somebody was in the ditch out by the truck stop. Oh. It looked like somebody else had fish tail and went off the road on the other side. I'm like, well, maybe you should slow down. Yeah, <laughs> might be a good idea. You know, it's like, you know, pedal to the metal. Well, then the My Wave truck and trailer come down from their road up there at the dump and never even stopped at that sign and pulled out the road. And I thought his trailer was going to flip over because it was so slick. I mean, his trailer yeah. fish tailed over there and hit the curb. And I'm like, boy, you should have stopped maybe, but yeah, I've been here. I have an old binder. When I cleaned up some of my stuff, but I will donate. <laughs> donate back in. Yeah. It's a bigger one. I had an old binder oh. that when I cleaned up stuff, so, you know, I'll donate back. I, the other day, we have friends um, who are part of the houseboat with my team, and um, they have. Uh, not like a range orchard, but like a numerous amount of orange trees, I guess. And um, anyway, I was teasing Denise, my friend, about delivering a box of oranges. We got a box of oranges in the morning. Yeah, it was You know, <laughs> you have to tease it more often. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're like really juicy and yummy. And those they miss the ones. Mm -hmm. those, are nice. those are nice. Today. I should have brought about five. <laughs> I know, because one's not enough. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, I got so organized that that's part of it. They're coming to me. Dummy. Well, I'm sorry, I was confused. But Friday we have a different meeting, right? Yeah, that's just a county work um, oh, work session. Okay. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Shellman wanted to have a budget work session, just a county court work session to yeah. talk about the process for this year. Yes. Yeah, I just got confused on three days. So are we coming to that? You can you if you want. I didn't. Oh, okay. I didn't. Uh, when is it? Uh, Friday at ten. I didn't. I can send out increase that to invite to everybody. Well, that, I, I, I don't know if I'm in town, but uh, is that for the new re? 
however you want to reconfigure. Is that what it's about? Yeah, just process more, you know, process to. Is it a public? Is it all to the public? Yeah, work sessions are open to the public. Uh, and where do you ever do you advertise those in the paper? Or where do you advertise them? Um, social media and on our calendar. Um, all the different work sessions and meetings we have. I'd like, I wish there was a spot in the county or in the newspaper where we could just call them and say, add this, but it's going to cost us every time we do. So. Yeah. And I know the radio has something, but I'm sure it costs too. I need to get with, since we're members of the chamber, I need to get with them and see if oh, they yeah. put that kind of stuff out on their weekly blast. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. Yeah, she would do that. That would be good. That would be a good place. Don't you think it'd be, it'd be, a good thing for us to be here so yeah yeah okay. i just okay. didn't think about it I no i mean that's okay I'm, not, I'm just saying we're gonna make some changes that i think i'm trying to help bill out with um making sure we know the accurate terms of all of our um board and committee members okay. so, to the best of your knowledge <laughs> what is your current I don't have a clue. dates? Do I, you know? I, I have they that. have to ask this way, but I have that. I'm done December 31st this year. So, Rick, let's see. Yeah, so Rick. somebody had to be done December 31st. That was me. Yeah, okay. she was so then I had that year. Yeah. So, so, what I have is um, Terry's term expires. Oh, see, this was 22. So yeah. you did last year. She did last year. I am supposed to be this year, the 24th. So, Terry got three, 24, right? Yeah. So what is her current term? So what's it three, is it three years? Three, three years. Year, three so three years. 26. So it would be 26, December 26. We're calendar years. Yes. Yeah. And then and you'd be 27. I'm 25. not going to do it again. Yes. No, I'm 24. December 24. Okay, you're December 24. So, so then you were 25. She was 24. So I'm when three. Terry was reappointed last year, right. she would be 23, 24, 25. Five. Okay. December okay. of 25 for, yeah, sorry. for Terry. And this one had January as the term starting. Yeah. yeah. Right. January, January 1. Yeah. What, what is yours, Holly? Was the, this January. It is I'm asking, reappointed. She yeah, has I'm asking for it to December be December of 24 is yeah. hers. Or no, 23. 23. December 23. Three. She's Sorry. 23. Okay. So 20. 23, 24, 25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're not, you said. I'm not going to ask you. I'm going to so be do we have to appoint her pretty quick? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have I have a letter of interest. Um, and I, I figured we would wait until our initial budget. Um, well, we didn't have to have some. Well, when we appoint the budget officer, we can appoint that one too, or just yeah. put it as the next agenda item. Yeah. Uh, um, I'd like to probably have to put it in the paper. Yeah, yeah I'd like to. Bullet, yeah, I'd okay. like to bulletin it in the okay. newspaper. Um, but I have a letter of interest from from Holly. And then get it in the newspaper and see if we get any other information. So we okay. make a choice from. Okay. Thank you, though. I was trying to make sure we. And then um, talking with the clerk, talking with Dag, this process of tracking all these boards and everything over the years has been started and never completed. Over the years, I think different people have picked it up and tried to, but that's what we're trying to do is create a spreadsheet right now with all the different boards and people's terms. Um, and most of them run to the end of the year. I think most of them are called. Summer, summer, um, if if I you don't know, I think if you'd like that, because that shows when my first term was too. That but but regardless, to start in November or something for the ones that are calendar year to start yeah. in November for advertising and then have a some make a selections in January. Those that are on fiscal year will start in in May or something and morning. Morning. You made it? I've been here a while. Oh. <laughs> Just gonna get out from the top of the city. She had a meeting in LeBrand yesterday afternoon. Pendleton. Or Pendleton. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, uh, I didn't think you were going to make it back. Isn't that strange that they don't have yeah. that information somewhere that somebody hasn't been the keeper of that info? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've so heard. like like I said, it yeah. had the beginning and the whole thing, but it was. <laughs> Back in twenty two, yeah. so. and then you you search the the minutes and it is county really court jumped. minutes, and it I mean you have hundred documents to go through because it's sporadic throughout, and right? I, so we're mm -hmm. trying to trying to get it documented, and if we can keep it going, once we get our new executive assistant, that'll be on their list of things to do. So do you, has it closed? It's closed. Yes. We're doing a um, an interview Friday. Just one applicant. Um, I'm not going to say that we're just going to hire that one person. We'll see what they turn out to be like, but hopefully they'll be a good candidate and we can make a selection. I hope but so. I just, <laughs> just want to say it's that way everywhere. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's terrible. It's so sad. It's really sad. It's everywhere posting, you know, they people just can't find anyone at all so um something that i wanted to update you might as well just take a second um the homeless housing stuff with malcolm county and Hunter county yeah. you know i called to say i haven't heard from you guys you know and I, and i finally got got them to answer and um apparently the they are going to fund a, an outreach man supervisor and then two outreach physicians one in Malheur county one in harney county and a vehicle and they are managed by that person in Malheur county but it'll be a harney county person and this would be someone to do some outreach to see what our homeless situation is to make sure nobody's going to freeze or any other such thing um, and transport them to Malheur county to a warming station or a very temporary or a transitional or whatever their situation is because they got the bulk of the money because they had plans and they needed and wanted to do that and we don't have the ability to do it and sustain it and there certainly wasn't enough money to do it in two places so Who i pays said for that transportation that, that all that, oh, they all that money Good. and so i said where's it at and the lady said it's posted on WorkSource Oregon and no, you know, we're not getting any bites. So I said, I'll look into that and post it. You know, I said, if, if you don't have your mouth here outreach specialist filled, but you have Harney, can you, can you start doing it in case we need to do that? And I said, it's comes under your umbrella, right? But the services are for Harney County to get them to you guys. If, if we don't have the services here, if there's services we have to connect them. It doesn't always have to be housing. Then we will do that. And she said, yeah. So that was news to me. I didn't even know yeah. it was that far along and that there's been a posting. So I'm going to look into that and try to get that out there. But again, she said, we're not getting any hints. She said, we're having a real hard time getting people to apply for jobs. It's just, so, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. Free handouts. Free handouts. Yeah. On the free handouts. That's, that's it. Or staying home and doing something at home we're building ourselves into a culture of no retail it'll be i'll order everything online because there just isn't anybody the workforce isn't there it's shrinking actually the workforce isn't necessarily shrinking but it's a different workforce yeah. they want to that's true home. that's want, true i should they have want said two hours a day they want to <laughs> Yeah, it's changed. Yes, yeah. we all want to. Yeah, I mean, it's and just, twice as much money. Yeah, yeah. I was reading an article yesterday, and uh, the poverty level of the of that brewery, and with their college debt, they're they're fairly low income. They don't have disposable money. They don't like shopping in malls, so. It's just amazing. It's online. And a lot of the reason it's online is because they can't afford to do others. Mm -hmm. So. 
Mr. Chair? Do you want to start by looking at the audit or do you want to start looking at the cash report? Yes. Um, yeah. As I sometimes do, if I have something on my mind, I write it down. And even though this is, it just take a minute to share it with you all, but at least it's my thoughts on because I know we're doing just a review of how it's going, right. but also um, some things that the budget officer will need to budget for, or hopefully will want to budget for, you know, with encouragement by others is, so here's some sobering stuff. You probably know most of it. <laughs> Harney County has a financial trend of declining revenues and increasing expenditures began many years ago and corrective action has not yet been taken. Our foundational revenue streams, which primarily come from our property taxes and the state allocations for the different offices and, and departments, and our federal forest payments have been stagnant or declining over time. And if they don't decline in the exact amount, in, in a relative sense, they're declining over time because they're not increasing. The combination of the following developments will further significantly affect Harney County's economy and county revenues in a negative way. The Burns Urban Renewal Agency, I could not find that to print off those sheets of paper that show year by year how much, how, how many fewer dollars we're going to get from our own property taxes it used to be what the county could use. Because it looks like but what it, I saw on the paper looked like it's going to double every year. It's it's going to morph yeah, very, yeah. you know, fairly quickly. So it looked to me like. Um, the longstanding stagnant local economy a county payroll obligation that may not be sustainable relative to our revenue outlook that has yet to be analyzed by a professional, but we need to have that done, I think. Um, increasing costs overall and anticipation of potential future negative economic impacts to agriculture due to Harney County's declining groundwater situation. You know, that's hanging out there too. Mm -hmm. And so all these things are challenging and so I'm hoping that we can budget for this coming year for some very important things and make them happen before we don't have the money to do it, which is one, a fit, an objective fiscal analysis of our current and future revenue levels, projected revenue levels, with recommendations on sustainable payroll levels and other things, you know, other categories that they recommend based on their expertise. An overall strategic planning for the county that people have mentioned that they want, that would be more general. And an administrative position of which the county court is in public discussions on that as well. So those are just some things to think about that will cost money mm -hmm. and that I think uh, are needed. And now that I've dumped all that, <laughs> can, sheets or other people can... But that's just, you know, really on my mind. Okay. Do you have a copy of that that you can give to Susan to, or make a copy that she can enter into the? I can even send it to you electronically. Give it to you if you want. Either way. Okay. Whatever is best for you. Any other opening remarks? Okay, what you want to do? You want to get right into the budget? Or looking at it, or you want to look at last year's what? Let's do the audit first. I think so too, but uh, you've not had a chance to really look at it. Um, That's okay. The presentation by the auditor was very positive. Um, if you've had a chance to look at that, you might look at that. Um, he um, went through the audit fairly consistently, uh, starting on page eight is where he started, looking at um, con that was his opinions and things are based there. Um, beyond that, it's a cash audit. We do cash, not accrual counting, uh, which means that everything is paid for at that point. Uh, there's no um, materials hanging over for next year to have to be paid. So any, uh, as I looked at it, I... Didn't see anything that rose any. Did you see I didn't, any? I didn't either. Are you happy with any companies for these people? I like them. I will say this year was a bit cumbersome with me double checking numbers. We had 
some issues that we've got worked out, you know, where they just have things categorized in a broader scope than what our categories are. I mean, like, can we have the same language? And so they made all those adjustments this year. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, we did have a few funds. Um, I think it's toward the back that we were over expenditure. Page 128. In some <laughs> <laughs> And I talked to him about that because the previous year, I don't, I think we made it through without any or maybe VOCA. Um, and then the year before we had had a few, and I don't like this, but he assured me that in almost every entity that they audit, that this happens and to not be so alarmed by it. But I will say, I don't like it. And we try really hard to, do resolutions to reappropriate if we have the appropriation there to, to fix those things. And I can't remember who's all on the list. Yeah. The road department, we did try to correct that because we knew it was happening and um, we just underestimated. So that's why they're over. Fields is our problem disposal site. So I, I'd like to go back to for just a second because you said, you know, because I remember we tried to correct the road department. And so, you know, in trying to look at the future for what the adjustment was that we made, what should we have? have overestimated our adjustment or, you know, like how did we arrive at that number, you know, to still bring us, not, not that 5,500. I you think know, not it's amount, just, it's honestly my best guess. So I look at the payroll and try to determine what I, you know, think it's going to be on a monthly basis. And anyway, it was short. So it's, it's my best guess when we're trying to figure this out. Well, and is some of the, the benefits hiking this year, we had a lot of increase in insurance and all, all those and I that were calculated into the original budget, but did some of those go over as well? Or did all of those fall in line with what we projected? Or did they play into it on top of it? I'd have to look at it, Kristen. I honestly don't remember. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but I want to say I think maybe there were some raises given later maybe that had yeah, that weren't caught necessarily in the original mm -hmm. budget process. Um, well, we, we accounted for those, though. Oh, we did? Okay. Yeah. Um, there was, in the past, the way the roadmaster had had done his uh, payroll uh, step increases was just basically, he basically padded his his personal services by 10%. Right. And that gave him the leeway to do, to do uh, step increases. And I was... Uh, we, we missed communication. We didn't have that communication. And I was plugging them in as projected by the department heads for a specific position, either at the beginning of the fiscal year or midway through the fiscal year. But we came together before we did the final budget and captured that information. So everything that was that he wanted to do for step increases were, was captured, okay. was budgeted for. Yeah. Um. I know I know some of his uh, big influx in was materials and supplies for fuel and asphalt, but some of those, I think the bid for asphalt came in a lot less than what they were thinking it would. So there could be some savings there from what was budgeted. Yeah, because he said, it, I think he budgeted five and it came in at four. Something like that. Yeah, it was substantially less. It was less than what it is this year. So next year's, which he was surprised. It was out of Alabama, Albina, Portland too. So, and I, and I don't know what the bottom line number is. Well, on the, this for last year, it was- Oh, this was last year's. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm over. thinking of this year. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Two different. It, it's just their personnel services was over about 5,500. Oh yeah, so, so on that one, I don't- You see it happening this year. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if we discussed why why it was more last year. I don't recall having that discussion. Well, I just know we tried to fix it, but we didn't we didn't mm -hmm. appropriate and we didn't move enough in the materials and supplies. It's just the gist of it. And then fields, um, 
Yeah, I'm sorry. We were, this is last year's. I'm yeah. concentrating yeah. on, on the hard. field site. So I didn't plan for that one. <laughs> um, they, I, I'm not honestly sure why they're over in personnel. I think it has something to do with um, somebody submitting a bunch of late hours to Deanna because they didn't have somebody to fill the attendant position for quite a while, and then. Fields has always just been by the skin of their teeth, really. They um, bring in just enough to kind of cover their stuff and their materials and supplies. They have an extra expense because their landfill is next to the school and they have to pay for an extra test every year. Um, community corrections is over in personnel, $3,700. The PERS reserve went over. Um, and we had allocated some money into that. And that is where Deanna makes adjustments with her PERS each time she does payroll. So like, for example, say we're going to pay $130,000 to PERS for payroll. It might actually be $132,000 when it is all said and done. And so she has to make an adjustment and we've been making it out of that reserve fund. Um, we had an another overage this year, but we've corrected that in a recent, with a recent resolution. And then the state court mediation. So was the, um, sorry, the um, community corrections that was in PERS? No, yes. this is last year's. Well, it doesn't show whether it was in PERS or not. It just says personnel. Service. It's personnel. Okay. I think that was a PERS issue though, wasn't it? it well, no, because that happened this year. This is last year and this, this year. So the PERS was that person that, then that caused our resolution this year did come from community corrections. Okay. I couldn't, okay. I couldn't remember if that was before or after July. And then state court mediation. So we have two funds that are circuit court monies. And um, when I look back on that one, they had submitted a bill to be paid out of that fund at the end of the fiscal year. Um, and I don't think we're paying attention to their budget. And so this year I would like to have maybe some kind of a small training session with the departments. Um, it just reminds them how it works. <laughs> and, you know, when I send these reports out, I'm hoping that everybody is looking at them, <laughs> but I don't know if they are not. And it's, yeah. We're talking $13,000 here, mm -hmm. which out of how many millions that we deal with, so I'm pretty, I'm not mm -hmm. real concerned about. I'd say most entities that have some margin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, that was the only, mm -hmm. I think, amount that we've, we've seen on this budget or this audit that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. So, but overall, I think they did a good job. You got a good job. Mm -hmm. They do have at the back of the audit a different. Um, oh, yeah, they made some pretty colorful graphs. Yeah, graphs. <laughs> that they have not provided with us before, which is a nice visual for how our monies are. Um, in this yeah. case, the first one is revenues and how the pie, the pie there shows where our revenues are coming from um, and what we do. So, um, and the rest of them are, are bar, or there's another pie which shows our expenditures. Um, and then we, other graphs on different uh, funds. And I think uh, the guys from the accounting at the firm was a little impressed with themselves for this too. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's always good to have visual, you know, especially as we try to track the trends. Yeah. Super helpful. But it's kind of like what Patty brought up. We have some trends coming into the future that I don't feel like we really have navigated. Well, I think 
I think there's a couple, the one page on page 140, which shows our general fund balance is an interesting one because we're back in 2022. We are as much as we were in 14 or so um, when we were starting really down without having a good clear view of where we were. Those, that 2022 um, Everybody figure started... though is- We don't know that it is. Huh? Feds. Well, yeah, the grant <laughs> money is the right. that the, the reason 22 is so inflated was the COPS took an equipment grant for like $1.5 million. Right. Yeah, so it kind of- Yeah, when it gets received in the general fund, those kind of things really skew our- picture right now. I, I have a general question and I could I, I assume this but and it probably never happened but the majority of grants that we have if if they're a grant coming from the state as an example and the state decides they have no money can they pull those funding of the grants no because most of them uh at least that we receive are bond funds and so if the bonds don't get issued we don't get we don't receive them period as long as the bonds get issued and the process goes on we get our funds but, but they are for a term well some of them are lottery funds yeah yeah, yeah. you have some, different plus money lottery yeah. funds bonds some are funds, general funds general funds and so it all depends on which pot it's coming out of yeah. and when when each of the uh state level agency heads you know they submit their budgets and all that and the governor does her recommended budget and you know she gives some direction to them as the executive to her staff if you will and that's where what happened with community corrections some years back when it started going down right. there is there is not the political will for the majority party to fund in a healthy manner anything related to incarceration for you know courts i mean that's i mean so that's what they even had studies done legislature directed to do to and they did the most detailed study you can ever believe and they just they didn't they didn't take they decided not to go with what that showed so those can change you know easily uh based it at that executive to agency head level anyway but as far as just stopping, you, know, you mean just saying? I, I, I don't that, feel I don't. that that's an issue. That we could even okay. Well, to. like as an example, we've had people that have been hired on. They've been they're completing a grant and have been hired on, and most I thought those grants were a specific term, and I'm going to use term, yeah. okay. So what happens when that term is over and we have an employee on the... The only employee that I'm aware of that was grant funded was the, the, the COPS grant, the School Resource Officer COPS grant. Mm -hmm. And the, the provisions of that grant were two years funding and then we had to maintain that position for at least a year afterwards. Okay. And then after that, it's going to be up to, to budgeting for them. But what about the library? I think the library, some of those people are those... funded. Well, that's where. That's well, where there's. I'm going to take a step back right here. Like, are these budget committee decisions or are these county admin decisions to launch those positions? Because I think we need to kind of stay at our bigger picture and not get into the details of one position or another in the grant fund. That really falls on the county admin to ensure that any employee that is grant funded is being watched. And that when the terms of those grant funds run out, that they're either terminated or another grant is brought in behind to continue that position. But I just know that we have a lot higher level things we probably should be working on. Agreed. But <laughs> just just to answer your question real quick, yeah. Mike, though, on the library, the only position I'm aware of there that has any grant funding is the work that's being done in the Western room right. and, and it's being funded by the library foundation. And it, so it's not funding that position itself. It's funding the additional hours to do that yeah. project. And once the project is done or when the foundation decides that they're done funding it, 
then that person goes back to their, it's a part-time position anyway, 20 hour position. So I think it's working 29 hours right now. So that when that project is done or the funding's gone, that person goes back to 20 hours. That, that's the only one that I'm aware of that has any grant funding outside of general fund or, or department fund. And I'm not, I wasn't getting into a personnel issue or something above this position. I think it's important you know what those numbers are based off of when you're working on the budget. That's why I asked the question. <clears throat> the grant funded position is for that grant, then they're dead. Okay. 90% yeah. of the time. And that's what I thought, but I also yeah. didn't know if the state could, if their funding went away, could they take away our funding? But if they're what you said, bond funded, it, it won't be. So that was my question. It was answered by that. Okay. Uh, do you want to start with the uh, cash report? That I think is uh, one that we need to look at as well as other individuals, but the cash report is the one that we, I think, look at the most. And I have the December 31st one. Since then, there's been some adjustment based on the PERS. Um, Which number is that one? It's the full cash report. I didn't put one on uh, the it. The PERS one is 217, 1, 115. I'm sorry. I didn't wear my ears today. What's your question about? Well, these ones that you sent out. Those are the revenue and expense reports. Okay. Those aren't. I didn't Not know that. if it was de well, delineated. I by send these. the cash report. That's usually like the first one I send. Yeah, and so she sends a cash report. On the eighth, there was yes. a full cash report sent. That's the last one I have, most recent one sent to me as well. The eighth? Okay. Yes. The eighth. I got it. Okay. It's as of December 31st. 31st yeah which is the first end of the first six months uh, that we're in this budget. And I, mean, I can print up hard copy with it. I'm, I'm fine. I'm no. fine. I can look at it on my phone. I, um, in looking it over, I think everything is kind of status quo. The only one department that I was, or fund that I was just, a little bit of concerns is is the road department, which I talked about it at right. this county court meeting. Um, you know, their balance is just is dwindling slowly. We do have a transfer built in. We have not, I haven't processed this year because we're going to wait and see if they actually need it from their reserve fund. So even with. Yeah, I, I looked at the road department one that you'd sent and just some just high level comments and, and my comments may show my ignorance more than anything else. But when you look at, you know, revenues over expenses, um, you know, they're negative 1,649,876, even with the $125,000 or so transfer from the road reserve. So they're going, you know, they're our lifeblood. 10 years ago, I remember hearing a county court people them very probably saying, well, we haven't touched our reserve. We haven't touched our reserve. We're touching our reserve. Mm -hmm. And so again, when it gets to big strategic planning, financial, professional financial advice, you know, they'll be looking at, you know, what are the, the key areas the county needs to fund it and, and, and based on your priority, you know, how much do you recite a certain thing so you can at least stay solvent? So thank you. I just that was my comment on that. Are there any funds planning on being receded, you know, into that account that we are waiting on? Um the so SRS will come. I think that comes in next spring. Um and then we have that transfer built in the next one, but they permit. And I was just basing it on the budget, not even if the budget's going to skew or is right on track. I just went with the budgeted numbers. Okay.
one I hit was pavement striping. And he did say one time when I talked with him that he's getting some of that out of the state. Uh, as, as they go along on theirs, if it comes to a county road, they don't stop. They do a little free gratis work. But he is down. Um, he's oh, he's overspent. He's striping for it. Yes, I think striping costs are as we know went up. And... Well, and the state's going to assume more. I think just to get nineteen million dollars to do it. So we'll probably find he's out more. Striping about. county roads with those. Yeah. No. Some of this he was going to have to to pick up some striping that they were doing. So, and that's probably why we're over for 103% at half a year, so. Which makes me think on this list of budget for in the future, you, you know, whatever year we can start doing it, you know, some kind of really good professional grant writing ability because, you know, Eric doesn't have time to go after some grant, you know, very much. I know he does a little bit, but in any of our areas that are always going to be challenged that are so important, you need to have some kind of capacity to seek, seek some funds. Well, Bill and I get the information on the SEAC as well. That you know, there's there might be some fed or some some monies. I ship it right to Eric. And I know I that see we have a transportation one now. I probably should send it again to there's a potential transportation coming up. Oh, to Lamborn? Yeah, I didn't get it sent to her yet. And, and uh, you know, I know that yes. at least the three of us, we get these invites usually the morning of, but for these federal White House briefings on this money coming down, this you know, there's always that stuff that, you know, uh, if we had someone who really was a generalist and could really... Well, manage. there's a lot on their website to get on there and start looking at it. You just think, man... How, how, how much of that are we eligible for? Yeah. yeah, I mean, we can't get to it, so we, we can't ever access it. And it they, they make it sound easy to apply for, but like just fill out an application, you know, right? And, yeah. and it ends up being 40, a labyrinth of 45 pages long. Yeah. <laughs> how much labor do you have to do? Right. But if we get somebody to do those things, we want to be sure we. Check your homework. Well, no yes, problem. I mean, yeah, the John Day issue. <laughs> okay, any other questions on the cash report? Just if Bobby Joe has anything she ever wants to share, I always love to hear that. Thank you. And the pooled cash? Pardon? Anything in the pooled cash report? No. I mean, other than what I just said about the yeah. yeah. Okay, Bill had sent out, and also as a reminder, but we'd gotten them before, road department, um, planning. Um, we've talked about the road department some. Planning was next that I printed before with community corrections. The uh, revenue and expense reports that, that uh, yes. Treasurer Heaney, those, she had sent those out for the last meeting and then whatever. Yeah. I just attached them to the uh, invite. Right. So in planning and community what do they call themselves? Something we got. We you know, ours is building. Yeah. Um, I didn't see anything out of range there. In the um, the building, the building fund is separate from that. Is that correct? Still. The which building fund two thirteen building program. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I have some comments on that. Do it. Okay, again, just trying to. I was trying to stay high level this time when I looked at stuff. Um, we transfer ten thousand um, dollars from the road department and 
fifteen thousand from the general fund into that, and I circled it and said, "Can this fund pay for itself without these thirty-five thousand dollar transfers? Are the fees that we charge is the the workload um, good right now for the services that I know we're doing with the septic stuff and um, and all that? And also, uh, we have." budgeted and and have been looking for a building inspector we need a commercial building inspector and i do think we need to think about contracting that work and not adding all the the fringe and benefits to that if we don't get a good one i don't want someone that's like i'm a great person i will learn i mean we need someone who already has the credentials to most of the credentials at least to to do that because so we haven't we have We've had two two interested parties in that announcement. Uh, one individual out of the Grand, and another one out of Sonoma's Falls. Um, the one and and they've both been qualified. Would have would have met our needs for that commercial work program. Um, after some negotiation, talking back and forth, the individual from La Grand has withdrawn interest, and we have an interview tomorrow is scheduled for the individual from Klamath. Um, and that individual does have those certifications and 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 uh, background for the commercial side of things. Uh, just as a little background, right now the county you contracts with the state to do those commercial inspections, and they keep ninety cents of every dollar of of permit fees that we that we charge. Um, so the goal right now, in conversations with the with uh, Brandon, the uh, planning director is to find somebody to do that role and keep it in and do it in-house and keep those revenues. If we can find that person, if we can fill that position and find that person, this department along with planning, which is part of the general fund, could be self-sufficient. They could be, you know, it's, it's a lot like the RHC and the health department or as the RHC funds the health department and they will joined together, it would be the same kind of a thing where... Yeah, I think that's all fine if it's this is not someone who has their credentials and has never done the work before, yeah. and they're not even going to know what they want, or they're going to come in and go, this is low, I'm going to demand a lot of money next year, you know, that kind of thing. Just keep in mind, whatever the solution is. Um, on the second page, I looked uh, that we budgeted $70,000 for contract services. I was just wondering if anyone knew off the top of their head what that was for. It just kind of caught my attention this time as far as what is that? In, what we, in the building fund? Mm -hmm. the building. No, just something to be aware of. Yeah, I mean, not trying to be picky. I just let things jump out at me. Well, and we've only spent 25% of it. Yeah, so I mean, maybe it's just not specific enough in its label for us to understand, but it's fine. That's all I have. Thank you. Anything else in the planning? Our building programs really. Community connections was the next one that was sent out. Sorry, which one did you say? Community corrections two fourteen. And this is a. I I really think community corrections is important. But our case is caseloads have been going down over the last three years at least. And we never want to cut staff or anything, but we just need to keep thinking about that. What is the caseload? Are they gonna make community corrections healthy again? Or is it that with Measure 110, they're not going to have many cases anymore because of the way they've structured it? Just stuff like that, big picture stuff. Well, just that one topic alone, Measure 110, kind of keeps our community corrections in flux. Yes, yeah. and how they end up, how they end up deciding what they're going to amend that that measure will affect caseload or mm -hmm. could affect caseload, which then the state we should realize more funding from the state, but. That's not a guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the state, whether they're right or not, they want to take, they don't want to put any money back there. They want to put it all toward mental health, mental health, mental health, which is needed, but not until they have a real plan. Because again, they can have all these positions they create and nobody's applying for them, right? 
not easy work. What I saw here was a little bit of a paradox for me under third line down their work crew supervisor that has been eight, that's an eight thousand dollar amount with no expenditure yet down under work crew we have an expenditure so we have a work crew out with no supervision so that position the work crew supervisor retired and it's hard to say what the expense could be but i mean well, and you might have a work crew out, but it's the other two personnel that are right dealing with that. I mean, instead of hiring, yeah, I just a separate supervisor. We have an eight thousand dollar budget item for that person, but they haven't backfilled that position since then. And they, we have no expenditures out of it yet. We have work being done. Lee needed to say just current and, staff or staff. Well, and it can be something that you need to train the people how okay, to well, code. I mean, who, yeah, I don't know what their expense is, but. Well, and right now, even just to do a work crew has lots more groups. So. Yeah. Just an anomaly I saw in our. The next was emergency department. Now, I know that, oh, wait, this 911. Yes. Is that going to be a reference? 911. 223. So, I was thinking, you know, I don't know why. I guess BLM pays seventy five hundred dollars in revenues, and uh, is that so appropriate? Is that the best we could get? I mean, I know years ago they, they paid more. I was just trying to look for more funding. The sheriff's office transfers twenty five thousand dollars into this, and we do twenty five thousand for general funds. So there's that going into this, and yet we we have that emergent nine one one emergency tax. We're supposed to get five hundred twenty thousand dollars, you know. Uh, as in a year, which is good funding. Why can't why can't we stay within our revenues on that? You know, um, we get these transfers happening. We have the extra revenue now for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, emergency tax, and we still have a deficit at the end of the year as budgeted. As budgeted, seems like we ought to that one ought to at least break even to me. You know, I, that's just me looking again, just as a person looking at the numbers going, why can't, I don't like to eat any off of that one. That one's got some funding. So just a comment in general. Maybe that's not an administrative thing, not a budget. Thing. And we appear to be fully staffed at six plus supervisor. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think they are. Well, I think they just well, got one transfer to the huh? The jail bank. Yeah. So they might have one vacancy right now. I mean, I'd like that. I would like. I don't know. We can look at that. Hold that. Reach out. That budget officer. <laughs> okay, next one is public health, 243. Um, so just, I'm sorry, in the, in the 911, we have We budgeted five hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of revenue for for the nine one one tax. Right. Total expenditures. Seven thirteen. Seven thirteen. 
our total revenue is six hundred and ninety thousand. Mm -hmm. Um, so that puts us what twenty three thousand dollars. Yep, twenty four, twenty three and a half, twenty four. They're already over a hundred percent on their overtime pay, and it's just fifty percent of the year complete. Yeah. But that might be due to just in staffing. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to hit when it's even always been announced mm -hmm. as people leave. Mm -hmm. When well, they've been short staffed for so long. That's when I asked if it was fully staffed. Well, well, it was. Yeah. I think it was just they, recently. Yeah. It? I, you know, this you get into the fact that this is the 911 is a separate entity that's been placed under the sheriff's office for administration right the sheriff has has that administrative authority to sign duties as he sees fit um i'm not sure how that that replies to his department anyway i don't know how that applies really to the 911 being the entity that it is and 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 the county chose to put it there for efficiency or whatever chose to put it under the sheriff's office as a as a the appropriate place whatever to put it that was years ago um the supervisor is not working in dispatch and has been that's his decision but that's maybe that's where some of the overtime expenses are coming from is because instead of having that first pers person that normally would have worked in dispatch is not working in dispatch it's just being a, a supervisor, manager, administrator, whatever. Um, so, you know, we may have to look at that as far as as far as the budget for nine one one this next year and, and how we're going to realize those those costs. So, is the supervisor not going to get certified then? I was going to say the supervisor certified. <laughs> yeah, I, you're quicker than me. <laughs> I don't. I believe that the plan was that she was going to uh -huh. go go to the academy. I don't believe she has yet. Um, but there's I, a lot of reports that have to be turned in that are separate from even answering calls. That without a supervisor, those reports were being delinquent, and so there's a lot of paperwork on that end too. That does require someone to step out of that role as being on the phone and dealing with all the requirements that we were not right. doing and doing well. So I you would know, say that's kind of one of those situations where catch 22 it becomes a catch 22 yeah. instead of having them on the call, you need someone to make sure everything else is staying in check. So do you have any idea what percentage increase has been in 911 calls in the last year or two? I don't. I think that I would be know. really interesting. I mean, I think it's way up there, way up there. Yeah, I know it's service. not any less. <laughs> no, I know it's not, but I, I mean, sadly, you know, and then of course they can't deal with these people. And I mean, they deal with them 50 times a day. Some of these people they're dealing with all the time. It's really sad. It's a symptom of the system. Yeah, from what I read on 911, that's common, unfortunately. Sorry. There's a a fifty thousand dollar contingency mm -hmm. that has not been used yet. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how that shakes out at the end of the year, that could cover part of that twenty three six. Well, that's the exact same amount as the transfers, you know, right? From sheriff and general fund. Just just one stuff to think about. Nothing different. Without at the moment, sure. the twenty-five thousand from general fund, and yeah, the twenty-five from the shares. Those equal. The so they would see. So I believe the structure, the funding structure for this when it was originally, the 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 county pays pays a twenty-five or pays a quarter share or twenty-five thousand dollars share. The sheriff's office pays a twenty-five thousand share. City of Burns pays uh, we upped it this past year city of burns pays 30 pines 30 um now the sheriff's office have obviously is is a uh, a user a 911 user whereas the county's not a user but I, you know just in the funding structure back when they brought it over that's what you know 
I don't know. I don't know for sure why they discharged well, the fish. That's probably from rural people, rural yeah. communities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's our contribution. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's the yeah the sheriff and the general fund. Yeah. Is there an increase in the tax that was projected though? Didn't they up that again? Is it 520? The Which tax? The 911 tax? tax. I thought that they upped that amount. Yeah, but you mean since last year when you took it up? I thought I saw something that it yeah, I don't was going to increase have to... that again. That would be something to, to check into. I, if that's the case, I, I saw in an email that it had been increased, but I don't recall. I I don't recall. I have to ask. Um, I'll have to ask Dawn. But if it is, then that could we could realize more revenue and take care and of the. If it, if it wasn't, then yeah. it, maybe I misread the email, but I I thought I saw something where there was some addition tag. Should be a good question over there. Yeah, I'll find out. Super. Okay, sorry. Next one, then. That's no. I was that's kind a, of trying to di dissect that a little bit, but um, what was your next one? The next one is public health. Two forty-five. Yeah. I got yes. some comments on that one too. I took a lot of time yesterday trying yeah. to look these over. Um, it looks like there's you know places in the uh, revenue which are zeroed out and probably will drop off. You know, in another year or so, right? Once they're zeros for it so, has so to be three I kind years. of try to take those out of there and look. And yeah. this is just this is a hot, very high level. So public health and of course our rural health clinics work together and et cetera. But from just a public health standpoint itself, I remember when the budget crisis hit and Jolene Caulfield was asked to do the mandatory services, you know, functional areas that public health is mandated to do, how many staff do you need at the minimum? She said two. We have nine FTE right. that are considered public health. I'm just, again, looking big picture how we staff and where, where they belong. Um, and of course, some are optional um, programs that are good programs. They provide good services, but you know, we make sure that those grants and funding streams fully fund those and where they belong. So that was just a make sure things are that are not public health functions, but are more rural health clinic, primary care, you know, are reflected there as best you can. I know it's not a totally clean way to do it, but nothing critical, just. There were no, there were no FTE increases in this budget cycle in public health. And, and what, what happened over, over the years for those who were around for the budget crisis is that year in general, because of the situation, not just public health or anything, we said we need to actually reduce some FTE and over the years. And we, we really haven't. We've actually mm -hmm. increased some. Mm -hmm. Again, that doesn't include all the reasons in the analysis. There were always decent reasons, but. We have a, a work session planned, which we're going to, can you see my email? Then have to probably reschedule. Which is fine because the rat for the division by 12 got rescheduled to that day as well. The March 6th. <laughs> yeah, let's well, not even have count this week. County well. court. <laughs> they change, we usually meet at the end of the month and they change it for March. So, anyway, we do have a work session planned to discuss um, Harney County Health Services in general, all of, all of our health services programs, um, organization structure, and and where we're going to go. Well, I, I think that. even what Patty just brought up, you know, what Jolene had said versus, you know, the folks that are in there now, I would like to hear from them what they yeah. see as what are essential services versus back in the day and how she was running it. Um, you know, I think that that would be good to get a, a current picture of what services are, are seen as being part of public health. I like the people that are doing it, but I'm not sure that they have the background sufficient to be able to make that kind of conversation. I don't know. I think that they uh, are very familiar with their work. Well, I know they are, but I'm not sure that they have the background uh, to be able, like Jolene had, 
that would be I able to go. I don't know if Joey have any <clears throat> more dog in the fight than what the gals do. <laughs> so we're we have we have some work session time yeah. planned to to look into that. Um, as far as I. I'm going to say I'm going to step out on a little bit of a limb and say I know a lot of the grant funding in this case, the modernization and healthcare yes. funding, um, some of those positions might have been mandatory under that funding to spend, you know, which again, if we don't, if, if we don't have those positions, we don't spend that portion of the funding, I guess it would be the thing. Um, and as long as we keep realizing that funding then we provide those services. But if that funding goes away, then, then we're gonna have to make some hard decisions on the positions and well, those with, services. With COVID, we saw a lot of change from the state of recognition right. of needs within public health that could have never been, you know, really funded prior to COVID. And so and and so the OHA is the monster agency that yes. has grown because politics. And I know that's where we continue to monitor what's going on with that, you know, especially within the legislature of, you know, how much support are they going to continue to receive over time, or do they do some backpedaling and, and start whittling away where we've got to during 2020. <laughs> do we have a medical um, executive person now? No. no. Uh, well, that's one of the well, things well, we need to discuss in this work it. session. Yeah, I, I had some I, I had some different ideas and and then uh, kind of realized, <laughs> yeah, kind of realized at the end that this position, because of the because of the budget, because of the, the services and everything, that um it was above just the administrative role, which is what I'm serving as. So I put it to the court and we decided to have a work session on it, bring in the people that do those jobs. Have a full picture view of it and decide where we want to go with it, which was good before we ended up actually filling a position and deciding that wasn't the right direction. But mm -hmm. so that's where we're at with it. Um, Under public health, the one that started me was a fourteen thousand dollar repair. They received additional funding in the. Was that for the roof or the parking lot? Yeah. And I think it is the money in the revenues that's tied on. The CDC PH infrastructure, like they budgeted at 71,000 and we received a hundred and, excuse me, 114 this year. And they explained to me that they had additional funding to do the parking lot. Which is one of those situations where, in their world, they are really watching the grants and going out for them, but it's complementary to us, things that are allowable. Yeah, I just, I mean, that one. No, we had budgeted. I, I've seen up here that that one, and I assumed with where it said infrastructure, but it was to cover those. And originally, I had thought about doing a resolution, but if we're within our category limits, right. I'm not going to. I would love to talk to them about that. So, uh, well, I'm the offset for that fourteen thousand is going to be in the revenue CDC PH infrastructure money. Which one? CDC PH infrastructure. It's kind of about three three five one, third of the way down. Maybe. Three three five. Okay. Budgeted at 71 and Budgeted. yeah. We've spent 42 out of there. We've received 114. It's actually 114. Okay. When I when I look at the public health and RHC, just the current budget, not actuals. The public health side uh, has Expenditures over revenues of three twenty five thousand, right. and then the rural health clinic for just the budgeted year has revenue over expenditures of two ninety one. So they don't cover paying for all that public health. I just want to make that unless I'm reading this wrong. I know we've always said the rural health clinic's bringing in a lot of money. It you know 
is it help, helps boost up our, our public health. And so I just want to bring that up as it doesn't look like it when you look at it year by year. And I, I appreciate you bringing all those things up to me. Um, I just, but I would like to say, like, we approved this budget. Yes, I'm, oh, yeah, okay. no. I'm just trying to get the awareness back on the budget yeah. committee and the budget, a possible budget officer, you know, just, and COVID, you know, was very beneficial financially for that. And I don't know how that, what that means in today's environment, you know. I am a broken record, but Bobby. <laughs> I am. Well, the other thing that I wanted to say too is always keep in the background that the county is only responsible for a certain amount of public health, public health right. which is immunization and communicable disease, restaurant, yeah, clean, healthy food, clean water, and I mean, there's just like five or six of them. Yeah. The rest are both kind of, I mean, Philosophically, some people say, well, reproductive health is community health. It but that's also primary care. Mm -hmm. So those are the those are the gray areas that we need to talk about someday. Yeah. I hear you. That's why Jolene said, well, technically we, we could do it yeah. with two if we just right. do those things. Right. Just, <laughs> okay. Any other questions on public health and RHC? Next yeah. was home health and hospice. Is that home the transfer of ten thousand dollars from home health hospice memorial? That was was that a one time thing? Is that now closed it's, out? Or no, no. They, they had they had three funds all together, and we was that what's that? To it's two fifty one. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no. Okay. Excuse me. So they had a home health memorial and a hospice memorial, and we combined those funds into the two five six fund. So we only have one memorial now. And then the, this transfer that is built in is just there if they need it. And how? What's the balance of that two five six? It would you know? be on the full cash report. Okay. I don't think we're off the top of my head. But it it doesn't increase, right? It's an amount that's we use. Money down goes on. into there. So like, if people donate for the balance, does increase in the memorial. Um. When people make a donation in memory of, that's mm -hmm. where those funds go. Thank you. Well, I like to compliment um, compliment the fundraiser that they did. Yeah. It's like they exceeded the twenty thousand dollars they were hoping to raise to over to a little over thirty thousand. So good job on that. My next comment will be on home health, so I'll wait in case this has anything for hospice. So, Susan, if you want to capture the, um, 251 and the department 51 is is uh, um, hospice and 55 is home health. Is that right? You got those correct? They're combined, aren't they? Yeah. They're well, they are, but they're departmentalized into two. Oh, well. Fifty five is zero five five two fifty one dash three dash zero five five is is um, home health home health and two fifty one dash three dash zero five one is hospice. So there's two departments within this one. This one. I, I understand. Okay. I, I just uh, didn't see the need to differentiate. Except for only just like just like the RHC and the health department, All right? And so the bottom line is the same, but sorry. All right. Um. So for home health, we transfer seventy five thousand into from the general fund into home health, only if needed. 
only if we and we did not make the transfer. I okay. think for the last two years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I forgot. I don't have any other. Their overtime pay is high. They're one hundred fifty-seven percent. So what happened there is, Home Health had a line in their personnel that was called call time, and we inactivated it because there was no, we didn't put a budget in it. So there's nowhere to put the call time. So it's now going into overtime. If you generally notice, Oregon paid leave is killing us. It's a mess. Yeah. But the, um, oh no, it's the unemployment insurance that's a mess. Yeah. And I'm, I have a note to talk to Deanna. So we were going to like try to really look at this and see if we needed to do resolutions to change appropriations. But then she said that state may now change it again. So we're just kind of waiting to hear instead of going to all the trouble if, if, if it's going to plan. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd wait till March after the legislative session. <laughs> um, last year's budget, it was figured at 0.6%. Right. This year, we didn't get the, the numbers until after budget. And it was, they, they gave us at 1.2%. Right. Now she's here in the next year, they're, you know, we're getting some free information. Next year, they're looking at it being 0.6% again. So it's a possibility that it could be less than 1.2 for the whole year, or it could be 1.2 for half of the year and less for the other half of the year. So it's it's in flux right now. And, and you know, I think next year, um, we'll probably budget that line at maybe 0.8% or something like that, just to give us some buffer next time. Any questions on home health? How about hospice? Um, hospice, the only one I have is publication and fundraising expense. We exceeded there. But like you said, fundraising expense is good. Yeah. They should be able to pay that. Yeah, I wondered about the publications too. That might be a label that isn't exactly what it is. I don't know. Now it's nearly doubled. Any questions on hospice? Next page was the fairground. And it is um, 252, excuse me, sorry. I'll remember to try and do that for you. Is the um, transfer for fairground operations from the park fund, is that a one-time thing? I know it's already been transferred and it was new. This year, so yeah. I don't recall a conversation around it. It's been done now. So the conversation years. around that is when the RV park was put in, yes. the park fund gotcha. would be utilized to help keep up with that, especially where the water payments from the city were much higher than projected. And so therefore it was supposed to be an ongoing transfer to help cover those increased water fees that were not projected when the project was put in. And it's allowable under the park fund. Yeah, sure. I have a problem with it. I'm just wondering how much do we have in that park fund? I you look at the pool clip. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> It'll tell you. Yeah, yeah I mean, they'll approved it because there was sufficient funds in there to do that. And, and you once it, it's up and going, it actually captures more revenue because we have it into the park fund. Do you have any idea how much it would cost to do whatever so that we don't get billed for those water? months that's an ongoing because discussion because it would be nice to get it done and then let this park fund really help 
even more than it's already about. It's not a very simple solution when you're dealing with the city and then what it costs to shut it off and turn it back on wasn't economical to do that. So unless we can negotiate something with the city, which all depends on who's at the city, <laughs> yes. we are not going to change that dynamic. When we had a few conversations around it, but haven't gotten anywhere where we negotiated it down. How much it, how much rental again. usage is it getting? Is it getting quite a bit? Obviously, it's seasonal. Oh, right, but right, right. You still have people coming in and getting transportation. But now you're not utilizing those old camping Looks spots like as much, except the dry camping. Do they charge them for the dry camping? Yeah. It's not right there. We also have, you know, just a little FYI regarding oh, uh, the homeless population that they have down there that is greatly reduced uh due to management changes and how they handle situations down there and having presence down there with Dennis and Lindsay both being at the grounds a lot more frequently uh our problems with break-ins and everything else have greatly diminished so that's been a good thing and then there's no long-term camping for you know that situation that was escalating a couple years ago I just don't like to hear it, it's too hard to fix, you know, on their end. I mean, it, yeah, there was some misinformation initially from from the city. You know, we thought that those charges would be. Yeah, that we thought those were on two separate accounts and it would be easier just to close the, the RV park account in the wintertime and then pay an $80 reinstate or reconnect fee in the springtime instead of paying the bill all month, all month long through the winter. Um, because we, well, and we could still open it up and, and rent spots out in the wintertime, but just with a notice of reduced services of having no water and sewer during the wintertime, mm -hmm. it still have revenue on it. But then it came back that the they're all to join together. The water lines and everything are joined together. It's the same account, and there's no way to, without digging up the ground and putting a separate meter or whatever in, there's no way to differentiate the two services. Yeah, and they charge you'd have to spend more in order to separate the yeah. yeah. And I, and I believe not. they charge us by connection out there, don't they? In the RV park, we have 20 spaces. They charge us for 20 connections. Which was an unknown yeah. after the fact that each connection had a separate charge. Right. There's 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Thank we you. tie that into getting money back from the urban renewal. <laughs> It was blighted property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be figuring out something. <clears throat> okay. Other questions on fairground? <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy one. So they charge it for each space for water and sewer? For At water. That, just water. for water. That's weird. Why don't they just charge? I guess that just well, I, I assume they do that to all the hookups in town that are on RVs as well. So I don't think they're going to probably face this problem in that industry, we call it, of trying to provide RV spaces. But they didn't present that info up front. Well, that was prior to me coming on. That project was already in motion. And so I don't know what officially was presented or not. I don't recall that. Detail being brought mm -hmm. to light in the conversations we had, but it's something we found out yes. once it was completed. All the conversations are moot. Because <laughs> I know their water rates, unfortunately, and hasn't their water rates really went up a lot in Burns? Yeah, apparently yeah. they have. I think they kind of, so, they kind of like double. Well, and that was Go part ahead. of it, I think, with the initial Go project ahead. being projected and then their rate increase is what snuck up on the whole project is when it, the project started versus when they made that change then we suddenly got hit by that Maybe, and again it's going to depend on who's down there and, and negotiating with them i mean maybe a solution could be that we put in we put in our own valve and and uh, shut off the flow of water to the rv park from from october 1 to april 1 and see if they'll suspend those bills on those connections during that time. Yeah, and I think that, like I say, we have to keep trying to find solutions. We're right. yeah. just not there yet. But 
you know, that's that's one reason why we made sure to hook the irrigation well in and put another drop line in because the drop line on the track side was city water that we were paying for every time trucks were being filled, fire trucks were being filled. So now we have a drop line off the irrigation system so that we aren't utilizing city water when we need a drop line. To, to, oh. to, um, to water the, the arena or the track or something. Well, okay. that, it's a bottle like of water. Or... The BLM were in there and everything no, else. No, yeah. And then even people that wanted to turn buy water, water well, before they weren't buying water, they had left. We'd come in and fill tanks. You know, there's been a lot of things we've had to manage different radiant <laughs> that we now have more control over when that drop line gets turned. Because nobody lives at the fairgrounds anymore, like they have before. No, but we now have better control mechanisms put in place to prevent use of things from the yeah, We had a, a well there, it wasn't being really used. I mean, it was being used, but not efficiently. Yeah. And then we're within our water right now with the way we have it set up and what we're watering and not watering. All those things. Okay, questions? <laughs> Um, Rick, since you're so good at looking these up for me, um, 326 Fairground Reserve. Um, how much we got in that one? In the full cash pool report? I believe that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can see. Oh, wait, it's doing it. Okay. Forty two thousand round numbers. So the transfer in this current year's budget for the Honey County Fair was, you know, bringing that thirty two thousand over to the fair. And does is that gonna zero that out? There was conversation last year during budget time where the fair manager, I believe, wanted to transfer that balance over. So it was budgeted to do. Well, and I she think has it requested to do that. Yeah. Transfer what it would be, or would it be using it out of that fund for the designation of those dollars for this the upcoming project? The, the 42 dollars. Yeah, does it have to be transferred and then yeah, utilized or can it be utilized directly? Well, it has to be transferred out of the reserve into the, 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 the uh, uh, operating. Yeah. And it's scheduled to do so this year should she request it, right? Is yeah, that what you're saying? Within the guidelines of the. But that's a one time, if she does that, then it's in the. the yeah, I mean, if, if it goes for it, we have no be reserve part. And that one. Almost zero in the reserve. Yeah. Okay, just one awareness. Well, I, Rick would have probably a, the best knowledge on that reserve. Is those are is that the fund that has the Morgan money in it? Or it's supposed that, to. That is the Morgan money. So it's called reserve, but it's really funds that Morgan has put in for a specific purpose, and that's what they are planning on utilizing them for. And there was there's also a. I don't know what it is now. It was twelve hundred dollar fund that they had that was specific to for a or for livestock youth activities that was from drawings or a painting or something that someone did those are details we'll dig up that's yeah that's and it was it's it's got a lot of restrictions on it yeah they weren't just reserve funds that the no. county had put aside it was things people had specifically put in for specific uses and they're not really memorial funds, even though they are. Yeah, I, I don't mind telling you that was labeled. It, it got put in there because it doesn't really paint a clear picture when people see that officially. Not at all. Okay, any other questions on the specific funds? We have about 30 minutes left. Do you want to go through the general fund at this point and look at the individual Sheriff Department or auditors and those kinds of things. They can take a glance. Yeah, I'm just pardon. In those particular funds, the general fund, I tend, I was just tending to look to see if their percent of the budget 
revenues and expenses mm -hmm. were basically in line and yeah. they were a little over, but no concern. So I, well, I'm going to be a little more quiet and doing this part of the meeting. I was going to say in <laughs> general, for me, looking at all of these, telephone and internet was a funny number. 60% and some, 40% and some, 20% and some. So somewhere along the line, however, we're dividing up the the funds that have been paid in that lump out. We are, we're not being consistent. For instance, um, telephone one here on the sheriff is 47%, um, which is in line. Um, but in, in others, it's way out of line. Right. It exceeds. exceeds in most every case. And, you know, I know we were told several years ago that the administrator just divides that up and puts it in. Yeah, no, and I got a, this a formula or something that they use to do that. But I just, for me, it doesn't look like there's a good consistency. Well, and I know we've had questions around that before. And yeah. I think at that point, Deanna maybe has explained how. And being divvied up, and it still seemed a little funky <laughs> of how we try to be accurate with what the yeah. department is doing. I got that breakdown actually from IT. Bill. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah, like the, got... the general tax one, just pulling that one out. General, um, uh, the general fund for taxes, their internet is two hundred and. $73, which is 15% of what it, for the year. You know, that's not right. But somehow the formula so, uh, that yeah, pays the bill. I have to look at that breakdown. And um, I wonder if the breakdown that we're using for billing percentages is different than the breakdown that we used for bunching purposes. I don't know. You know what I mean? So yeah. some departments are paying more than what. And, and so then we changed over that service providers right and i don't know you know how that would have affected the numbers as well with the but, different service provider and i would request the same of tech support the clerk is paying at this point um where is text oh he's pretty good he's he's 49 percent um but in others the tech service is also a little strange. I thought that might be, though, generally the real money because they could well, bill. It's based on how many computers each. That's what I'm saying. So, so I'm wondering if, if, our, service. Yeah. if our billing breakdown of, of who's getting charged what, how, how the breakdown is, is not the same as the breakdown that we used for budgeting. Mm -hmm. So well, I'll guys, compare those two and see what we're... The three of you are paying eighty uh, right now, eighty-two percent for some. We've used eighty-two percent. Yeah, of your bill. You know, um, which you know that's where I'm. I don't have a phone line other than you know our cell phones now, and, and you can take one out of mine if, if that'll save money. Well, I I, I don't I, think it's saving money. I think it's how it's broken out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think it, I. Don't. The only time I really use it is. If I'm going to be there and it's a long conference call or something, and then I put on speaker, but otherwise I use the cell phone yeah. or the internet. So, um, so many of them are Zoom that you can dial in on your computer too. It's really changed the face of it now that we have Google Meets and oh yeah, all these other <laughs> ways of doing it versus just like online. It used to be the only way. Yeah. Um, here's a phone internet at 150 percent for juvenile. Which was upstairs. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to look at the, how that's broke down between. But anything you guys see, I mean, I'm dominating. I don't need to. Prisoner transport in the jail. We're really high on it, almost 80%. Yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Again, those kind of things are customer driven. I know. <laughs> uh -huh. And medical evaluations, 102% at this point. Are, are those done by our local providers? 
I hope. We're supposed to have a contract with uh, between the jail and the health department, Let's RHC. Sure that we pay for them. It's going to be like RHC or the public. Yeah, I, I know yeah. she's been down there providing that service. I, I don't know of anybody else other than her that she's done that. I mean, I know uh, Dr. Fitzpatrick does some stuff at the jail. I don't know what that is. Bobby Joe, I'm sorry. What report do I do I run for just a current general fund? It's the revenue and expense. This one here. Mm -hmm. Not any of this for a year. I have to remember how to read. Yeah. <laughs> and there's been one or two other things happen. You know, talking about the telephone and the you know, those things. I know we try to give a true picture of what each department is paying, but is that necessary? Could we just mingle all of that and pay it out of like general operations next year and not have a breakdown? Well, and make it a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, the only does it just turn into more work that is really necessary work because it's not like we're utilizing it for. The you know, except for maybe the clerk that's, uh, you know, his comes out of maybe his grant. Like he, well, that's know, what I was going to say, say Cammy. Uh, it's not Cammy, what do they call it? The yeah. 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 So yeah. like my yeah. office, yeah, there's two of the offices. Three offices yeah. that would be different mm -hmm. than the rest of the general. Yeah. But it just seems like more work, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Well, it doesn't really Again, for, it's a different picture. The bill's the same at the yeah. end of the day for what we're using. Right. And I agree. It's just it, those few departments that get funding from CAFA, you want to show a true cost of doing business in those departments so that we can mm -hmm. capture as many dollars as we can through Maybe that. Maybe we could continue to do that for those departments, but then lump everybody else in yes. there. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. And it's just a thought. You might okay. check with your auditor, see what he, he has a comment on it. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea, too, just in case there's an intent. Yeah. I don't think there's a need, but. Well, then we do the same thing with copiers and yeah. IT, everything, IT, That's everything, true. all those services that are broken down by department. Mm -hmm. um, the other funds, road department and home health or health department and whatnot, where they have different funding streams. Yeah, they're different. Yeah. But the general fund, there's no reason why all the departments. Yeah. I don't think so, but I'd ask. I don't know of any. I mean, it might, he may have a good reason, but I don't know. Yeah, I think it's it's just sometimes it's historically been that way and we just do it the way it's been done, but mm -hmm. it's good to ask questions. Well, and that's, we don't need to work that out, but we'd be zero hard. balance. <clears throat> and that was my goal during this first budget was to basically do things status quo because you can't tell what needs to be oh yeah for efficiency wise what you can change until you have a chance of looking at the way it's been done the only other are there any other questions on the journal fund you guys look at those were the ones that just sort of i just have two jump. points i want to make at the end but and then the other thing is the disposal sites we got a set of stuff related to them and since one of them is a is a problem child um, <laughs> and i have yeah. you know i guess i have a bit of a philosophical thing as everybody else has got their own thoughts philosophy and i don't understand why um our expenditures exceed our revenues on them um having are there fees no, appropriate, you know? I don't know. They, they, I mean, historically, they've allowed or been allowed to just run their own programs for the most part. 
they set their own fees and everything. But I think the the licensing, the certificates or whatever is due this year. They, we need to bring them all in. I've been wanting to bring them all in, sit down, have some budget training and everything else. But definitely because we have the 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 ten year licensing for them is due, and we have to do that this year. But this is most definitely a time to do that, bring it in. And I think they're going to have to take a hard look as a community at what their fees are, and in order to sustain their programs and build those reserves for um, for the. Uh, on my mind just went blank that the fund that we have to have for and in case you have to, oh yeah yeah, yeah. Our closure fees yeah closure you fees. know so i mean Please. while while it grows a little bit every year it's basically we're insuring it against our own revenues and our own right. reserves is what we're insuring it against so i, I think they really kind of need to take a hard look at what would this cost you if you if C and B was out here doing it, or what would it cost you if this went away and you had to start transporting it into town? Yeah. What are you willing to pay to keep this service in your local community and well, and make it solvent? I think the other question is, what are you, what are we willing to look at so that they're not burning it out in the backyard? Yeah, or worse, just leaving it out there, mm -hmm. leaving it alongside the road. Yeah. No, yeah. they would burn it. Um, <laughs> having a meeting tomorrow on de or next week on deq stuff <laughs> but i mean i know that when I, opinion, I think I'm very <laughs> the regulatory world does not like burning yes but the regulatory world likes to control everything that like, it should be controlled um so but i hit it i guess my reaction is I think they should be, we should be able to figure out a way that those things are, this. yeah, or whatever we need there. We have an, we have a site attendant, uh, I'm looking at disposal at uh, Diamond, that costs us almost $6,500. Um, and we're getting $5,000 of revenue. But just that one employee is $6,500. 64 6500 that might be a question of how how legitimate is that um and how much they have to bump their fees in order to right assuming they have at fields it's the employee is 72 71 yeah and they again they've they set would, those rates at each what they wanted to pay so i mean I would like to say it's not all employee expense. There are materials and supplies in there. Um, there's admin that comes to the county. There's yeah, yeah. So it's not all personal. But having a person there costs us that amount. Yes. So, anyhow, any more questions? Any more discussions? Yes, I have two things. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, one is. I wanted, I looked up on the ORS yep. 2294.428. Um, and it says, and it's and it's to go along with the, the comment that was made, the committee talking about the budget committee may ask questions of the executive officer or other staff and request additional information. The committee is entitled to receive any information it needs to make decisions about the budget. And I have said it in the past, I am going to ask questions and questions because I'm not gonna be left not understanding parts of it. So um, I know there's push movements to change the direction of that, but it is actually in here that the committee may ask any questions necessary to come up with their answers. That's the one thing that I wanted to talk about. Are you feeling like you're unable to ask questions? Are we stifling you? Or? I felt I felt the answer. I felt that Kristen did the, her comment was to stifle the question that I asked about the it's not the to grant. stifle, but once the answer is given to not go into the weeds of the details of that employee and what they're doing in that. And that's where I'm just trying to make sure that our questions don't go into administrative 
duties versus the question at large over the fiscal impact of a particular position. Right. And, and that, I that's just what I'm trying to okay. trying to navigate that to where we are trying to discuss administrative duties with a specific position. And position. I think we've so been really responsibility of right. the budget board with a specific position. I think we've been really clear about that in the past and I was not trying to find out a specific person or specific thing I was asking in general, which I felt I was told not to, but I just wanted to read the statutes that we can ask any questions and get any information we need to base our decisions on it. The other thing I wanted to read is an actual quote from, I don't know if anyone knows him, but Tyrus, and he wrote a book said, enough said, I think is the way it it, the book is and it says I think this is really important compromise requires a willingness from both parties to give something up to achieve a larger goal this means people must be willing to put aside their own self-interest and focus on the greater good as a citizen we must be willing to listen to opposing viewpoints find common ground make concessions communicate effectively and demand leadership from our elected officials. And I think that was a very important thing about compromise and understanding compromise. So I just wanted to read it. I thought it was important. Okay. Thank you. Is that, and I don't know what his last name is, but is that Tyrus that makes appearances on yeah. Fox News? Yeah. Okay. I thought his, his book is interesting, but that portion of compromise, sometimes I think we forget and we would work on self-interest instead of what we really need to compromise for the greater good and who we're working for. Yeah, well, that's the issue. There are Correct. a lot of them right here. Correct. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I have a question for you. Yes. So monthly, I mean, I send you the cash report and general fund. Yes, ma'am. All these other reports I am sending to like the landfill group or you know the the department head of that particular fund. Do you want to be included in all those emails? Because like I mean it would be a simple click budget board, everyone. I mean, you get all this information on a monthly basis. I want to inundate you with a lot to look at if if you really aren't going to look at it, but if you would like to look at it, I could add you to that and then you could in your spare time peruse <laughs> <laughs> these different I, ones. I don't need it. Okay. I'm just, just curious when you do send it to department heads or groups like you know, do they communicate with you with either a question or or an answer if or or on occasion like like a, for instance it's with public health that line you mentioned that was over right. like fourteen thousand when I saw that that month, I emailed the ladies there and said, right. hey, I noticed this, what's happening? And mm -hmm. Vicki responded with, we got additional funding, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but most of the time, no. I mm -hmm. usually try to let them know what their fund balance is and things like that, but. I you know, like it. In our coming <laughs> county court work I'm session. Read them all. <laughs> I don't know if we want to have an agenda item um, for the role of the budget officer. Statutorily, it's just pretty single point. You know, the budget officer gathers and, and proposes the, the, the budget. But as far as a, through the through the year, throughout the year time frame, it really doesn't say what the budget officer has a role during that time. Do we want to address that in our... I think that that's where the budget chair typically, in my mind, instead of it being on the budget officer, the budget chair typically, especially as we come into our quarterly meetings and everything, kind of fulfills that role of keeping, just like Rick just did, us, you know, kind of a setting an agenda and working through, uh, you know, the different funds. And, and I see the administrator, the administration of the budget. The administrator right now that resides at the judge. Um, that's why so much is on you as you are watching it, you are interacting with department heads, etc. So so the treasurer, you know, so to me that's where it belongs. Um is 
The budget officer prepares a budget. The budget committee works it, adjusts it, adopts it. And now life goes on. People are working within their budgets or some stuff come up, they go to the administrator. If it becomes a governance elected official type of a decision, it would come to us. In this case, because you and the county judge for, for so long has been the administrator, you know. Okay, and I was just, that's exactly that, what I was asking that, is just that's how clarifying. Yeah, I don't think the budget officer has, you know, additional. Okay. It, it's the administrator we're, that's we're, doing a lot of stuff in between. Yeah. Okay. I do feel like the budget officer primarily should be the one looking for the anomaly, like, like okay. watching it, tracking it. Um, a after the budget's adopted? Yeah. Yes, like now. And, the, and those duties have fallen on me, and I'm not complaining about that, but the the goal and was, and this was before Judge Hart's tenure, um, the, the goal for me would be like, if we have an administrator or whoever that budget officer person is, I mean, I can work with them to watch these things and help correct them. Yeah, again, this is getting into some of the other conversations that currently have them, but if we had an administrator, I'd like to see them have budget responsibility, i.e. the administration and, the, yes. and personnel management of a certain level. Right. Yeah, and I didn't intend to go deep into it here. I just no. was kind of asking. And that's where I think it would especially be helpful to help us kind of set forward, you know, because we don't necessarily understand from Bob and Joe's perspective, <laughs> you know, what does treasurer duties versus budget officers duties and you know i think thank you going to your work session <laughs> will help all of us better understand that process and where you caught things that you're planning on adjusting for the budget process you know and just making sure that we're all clear on that prior to getting into the budget season <laughs> well my question also is do you want to continue the format of how we do the budget i mean there are a lot of different ways yeah. to do it and a lot of less meetings yes if we wanted but well, i think maybe you brought that up uh, yeah really so i mean judge hart and i have talked about it but um just at my treasurer's conference this year um you know i've, I've learned like we we could do it all in one meeting yeah um we could have the budget officer along with department heads could come together build their budget agree upon that present it and we're done. And all we the don't secondary have to have. presentations right. would be. Yeah, the presentations. To tell you the truth, I would like to see all of that department head work done, not at budget board meetings. I'm, I would like to see them throughout the year at county court meetings come and talk to us about their awesome department and what they do and get some, you know, FaceTime, if you will, and help inform us what they do separate from, you know, the budget mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I think historically we kind of lump that and it's not necessarily as productive. Yeah, lumping it because I, then we, we get off on a lot of other topics as they give those updates to highlight things that are not budget specific and, things. And they could be called into a budget meeting if the budget committee had like a question. Just 10 yeah. different questions, you know, a couple different departments mm -hmm. and they could come in and give their answer. But, but I don't like the format of approving a blanket approval. I like the format of we get to look at the department and approve each one. And I know it's not and I'm necessary not to that. Yeah. I just I know what you're. I know bringing yeah. everybody in and for fifteen minutes turns into yeah. forty five. Yeah. Well, and then like last year, <laughs> yeah. it was an appropriate yes conversations <laughs> to the budget board because mm -hmm. it was an HR issue. Right. Should not have been here, but um, I just want to make sure that. You know, I like encoding on each particular yeah. one to be. Well, as in, I know you do, but if we have that, uh, if we have one budget meeting, that's going to be hard to do. And, well, I don't think so. If yeah. we don't have to go in. Well, I mean, maybe if we, we don't have, have our breaks. It means yeah. we could still go go through it all, but it would just go a lot quicker and smoother and faster because it's it's. It's been discussed with the department head and agreed right. upon, and mm -hmm. except for it doesn't, I think um, Karen would have to present her tax to the budget board, and we'd have to vote on that for prior. Mm -hmm. There would probably have to be two or three meetings, yeah. but at least two yeah. or three versus 
six, seven. And I, I would like to see that change to something along those lines, not trying to get out of putting in the time. I, I try to put in the time right. to get here, but you can't release the budget till the first budget meeting, right? No, you know, you can you can do it before. Statute says you can yeah. actually make it available to the public before before, before it's presented. The proposed yeah. budget, that you can be release good. it before. That would be good. We could yeah. each spend a little bit of time. So we're kind of prepped. Prepped in, if we have any specific questions. Anyway, it was just a general question. I know that there have been, there are other models. Right. It would I give do uh, what I do. that process, and we can just, you know, our work session. I think that's kind of what we yeah, want to discuss the process. Kind of for the next dive time. into the work session. Yes, so but yes. we're trying to nail. Well, they they just but want to get we, their input before we have our work session. All that time that we spend, or, or last year and traditionally before, yeah. that we spend um, in budget committee meetings, hearing from the departments, we could actually shift that to the budget officer and. And then in May, have have two meetings or something in right. May and right. be done. But for the most part, maybe save an as needed or an if needed session in June, before the final process to just one you know a case and have three meetings that total five hours maybe or something you know. Mm -hmm. And I do like the ones a follow up later, like like we're doing right now, like maybe have one midpoint. Just to make sure we're doing a check on yeah, where we are, still or meeting. quarterly, yeah, to just make sure we're on target. And then after that, I think, because I, I think that's I, important for a review. I know that you know. this budget committee and the recent past are the most informed, participatory citizen members that we've had. That years ago. I used to sit and be like Barbara. I'd, I'd sit and listen to the meetings, but it was rubber stamped by the citizens, frankly. And of course, they weren't. Yeah. We didn't have a crisis. We didn't have certain things that were really we had to really dig in. But you know, it's you, know, you guys are very informed, and it's good. Okay, okay. Um, sir. Are we... I, any more information? Adjourn. Bye. Tomorrow okay. at ten here.